Today, I'm going to be solving this quartic equation, x to the 4 minus 10x squared minus x plus 20 equals 0. And what makes this interesting is this x term here, because if that wasn't there, this would just be a quadratic in disguise, and this would be relatively straightforward to solve. But we do have this x here. How do we deal with this? What we're going to do is start by kind of completing the square-ish here. So we're going to get x squared minus 5 all squared minus 25 minus x plus 20 equals 0. And if we just rearrange this, x squared minus 5 squared uh, minus 5 equals x. OK, cool. Now, this is kind of interesting. Why is it kind of interesting? Here we've got x squared minus 5, but we've also got something squared minus 5. Is that a coincidence? Is there any relevance to that? Well, it turns out that there is. What we're going to do is suppose that we have some number alpha. So suppose alpha is a number such that alpha squared minus 5 equals alpha. Then what I'm going to do is square both sides of this equation. And if I do that, I get alpha to the 4. Uh, sorry, in fact, I don't need to even expand this. I'll just keep this alpha squared minus 5 squared. Uh, and that's going to equal alpha squared. If I just then subtract 5 from both sides, I get alpha squared minus 5 squared minus 5 is just alpha squared minus 5. But alpha squared minus 5 from this first equation is just alpha. And so therefore, if we have a real number or complex number, but it turns out that alpha would be real to solve this quadratic, if alpha squared minus 5 is alpha, then alpha squared minus 5 squared minus 5 is alpha. Or in other words, if alpha is a solution to this quadratic, it's also a solution to this quartic. If I just rearrange this, I get alpha squared minus alpha minus 5 equals 0. So by the factor theorem, this tells me that x squared minus x minus 5 must be a factor of this quartic. And now this becomes a lot more simple. We're just going to divide this quartic, x to the 4 minus 10x squared minus x plus 20, by x squared minus x minus 5. And in doing so, we get x squared um, because x squared times x squared gives us x to the 4. We're going to have a minus 4 at the end here. And if we maybe look at the coefficient of x cubed in this, it's obviously 0 because there is no x cubed term here. That tells us that when I expand this, the coefficient of x cubed better be 0. Well, I've got a minus x cubed from those two terms there, so I need to put a plus x here. So that x and x squared gives me a positive x cubed. And that is how we would factorize this. And this is great, because now I'm trying to find the values of x. I can just solve this quadratic and this quadratic separately. Using the quadratic formula here, I get x is 1 plus or minus root 21 over 2. And using the quadratic formula over here, I get x is minus 1 plus or minus root 17 all over 2. And those give me my four solutions to this quartic. A really cool solution that kind of makes you know, makes use of a very nice observation here. I'd give you an interesting task to try and generalize this and see which other quartics you can solve using this technique. Thanks so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing and giving this video a like as well. I'm close to 10,000 subscribers, so um, I think that'll be quite cool to have. Um, I'm not really sure if YouTube does anything nice if I get 10,000 subscribers, but it means one extra significant figure. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.